So I, here's the thing. You know, this is the first idea that I had for this chat. And that is what I call the reviewer dilemma. And I refer to this sometimes in videos, but I'm going to spell it out more completely now. The reviewer dilemma is that if I review, let's say, a power amplifier for speakers, how do I know what this power amplifier sounds like? The only way to listen to the power amplifier is to hook it up to speakers. And every speaker I hook up to that power amplifier is going to sound different. So what is the sound of the amplifier? <laughs> I don't know exactly, right? Now, I can use speakers that I know the sound of the speaker itself, because I've listened to it in a lot of different combinations, so I'm sort of sussing it out, but I don't know. And it's the same for a preamplifier, and it's the same for a phono cartridge, it's the same for anything that I review. As a matter of fact, if you think of it this way, if I review a phono cartridge, I have to put it on a tone arm, on a turntable, and a phono preamp. Each of those things can significantly change the sound of the cartridge that's being reviewed. So what is the sound of the cartridge? I don't know. It's really hard to just nail it down. So what I'm saying here, in the end, in any review that I do, I'm giving you my impressions of the product that I'm reviewing. That's it. I'm saying, this is what I played. This is how it sounded. This is how I felt. Here it is. 100% subjective review of the product. And then you could say, well, shouldn't you be measuring things? <laughs> or more importantly, Steve, shouldn't you do blind tests? So, well, here's the thing. <laughs> uh, when Tile Hertzens uh, was, had his site, Inner Fidelity, a headphone review site, he was a, uh, a measurement-oriented reviewer. Uh, he was really into being, you know, really nailing down the sound. And we did a debate once about this. And it was really funny. We, you know, we we did this. We, well, we debated e almost every conversation we ever had turned into a debate about how I review something and how he reviews something. And I said, let's record this, these conversations, and then edit them and make them into an article, which we did. Which unfortunately you can't read because the the website isn't there anymore. But I started the debate by saying, you know, Tyle, you reviewed the Sennheiser HD 800. And you, the original one, and you said it was one of the best measuring headphones you ever tested, but you didn't like the sound of it. And the Bowers and Wilkins P5 was a very mediocre measuring headphone, and you enjoyed its sound. So I think I just won the debate. <laughs> it's like, so there you go. But I have an even better way of putting this, and that is. If I review something, let's say I give product X an absolute rave review. This thing is amazing. It does everything for me. Great. And then let's say some people who watch my review say, yeah, I trust Steve. We're on the same wavelength. I'm going to go ahead and buy this product. And then they comment or they email me and they say things like, Steve, you really nailed it. This is exactly what you said. It's incredible. I'm loving it. Thank you so much. And when I get those emails and comments, I'm a happy guy. Then again. Some people buy product X, and they say, it's not as good as you said it is. It's OK. It's not bad, but it didn't light my fire. It's not the best thing in the world. And that's OK, too. And some people say, Steve, you're an idiot. You're deaf. This thing sucks. Why did you say it was so great? Those are, those are the, basically the three possibilities. But if an objective reviewer did a review where he measured it and only listened to it in blind tests, and said, yeah, not referring to me personally, but said, yeah, this is a great product. And then people buy, buy it based on the objective reviewer's conclusions. Three possibilities, same one. You're right, you totally nailed it, or it's just OK, or it totally sucks, and your measurements are screwed up. So in any case, from the uh, consumer's pers perspective, trusting a subjective reviewer or trusting reviewers that are measurement-oriented and proving that something is, oops, so sorry, that proving some, you know, A is better than B, it doesn't help you because you are all subjective listeners. <laughs> and you're putting it into your system of unknown mixing uh, capabilities with everything else, right? The product that you buy and how you insert that in the, in the system. So at the end of the day, the, at the end of the day, here's my, here's my suggestion. Whether it's audio, 
or wine or movies or golf clubs, you need to find reviewers or a reviewer that you feel some alignment with, that you tend to agree with them, and then trust those reviewers. That's it. The blind test, I mean, people just get me so much, do you blind test? No, I don't blind test. If you want someone who reviews with blind testing, then go find them, you know? So it's, it's a tightrope. So I just wanted to finish with this, because I, I had a big finish. And that is, what is my final system? If I retire, I have no plans, but if I was to retire, what would I get? And, and the thing is, the speakers would be the Klipsch RP600 amps. I just love those speakers. I love them. Big deal to my life. The power amp would be a Deckware Zen Trio, 2.3 watt per channel, but it's magical. That amplifier is incredible. The turntable would be my present turntable, the Technics SL1200G with lots of different cartridges. I don't have a phono preamp in mind. The DAC would be um, a Denifreps Ares. Uh, CD Transport would be uh, an Oppo 203. And, uh, and they, of course, the most popular streamer in the known universe, the Blue Sound Node 2i. And I say that because I see it in so many of your systems. So I know that as a fact. And now, questions. So the question is, what about room treatment? I have some room treatment in my, in my uh, videos. You see those black and white squares. They're made by GIK Acoustics. They're here at the show. And uh, they, do, they do make a difference, but I have them mostly because they look cool as a background behind my head. That's the main reason they're here. So I think if you're curious, it's one of those things, if you're curious about room treatment, it's worth trying, except here's the catch to room treatment. You have to have a lot of it. It's not like you buy a couple of square feet of room treatment on your, to put on your walls. That ain't going to do much. Next question. <laughs> oh, man. Is there, a, is there an accessory that you can make a digital uh, system sound more analog? Not to me. No, I'm sorry. I don't think so. No, this is not, a, and this is not hers. No. This shirt, this, who makes my shirts? A lot of people, I just buy most of them. Uh, this comes from Geek Outfit. That's, that's the name of the company. Where's Herb? <laughs> Where is Herb? That is always the question. It's always on my mind. He's here at the show. He's going to be doing his own talk at 2 o'clock in the um, something. In Masterclass, <laughs> Masterclass Theater. Theater. And I'll be there watching him. Oh, man, you're the people in the cheap seats. <laughs> are there any vintage speakers that are no longer manufactured that should have never been discontinued? I think um, the Dalquist DQ10 is a great speaker, in my memories at least. I ha yeah, I haven't heard it lately, but I, I have very fond memories of it, and I'm, I'm surprised it didn't have a longer life or come back. So many speakers are coming back. Okay. You, you mentioned uh, the Springers who like to do his reviews using a lot of data, a lot of testing, and you go with your feelings. Is there any chance that you could post that as a link on your website so we can all hear that? Because that really sounds fascinating. Oh, it's not a, it's not a real person. <laughs> Sorry. No, you mean the person who measures and does blind tests? Yes. I'm waiting for that to happen. I was just saying, I was trying to give everything I possibly could to the objective, measurement-oriented side to say that would be the ultimate in that. And there is, there is, there is somebody that does a lot of measurements whose name and side I don't want to measure spe mention specifically, but you know who that is. And um, do it. You know, he's there. He's very popular. I don't think he's as popular as me, but he's up there. <laughs> uh, somebody that'll pay He couldn't fill a room like this. Anybody? All right, dude. Do you remember what first sparked your interest in doing YouTube channels? 
My YouTube channel? Ha, yeah. Oh, so the question is, how did, how did I decide to have a YouTube channel? Wait, what was the first moment where you considered Well, the thing was that when I worked for CNET, there was a daily tech talk slash comedy show. And I was a frequent guest on that show. And I had a, the best time doing it. As a matter of fact, I had a good time. The hosts of the show had such a good time that when they were stuck for an idea, they just said, Steve, come in, do a show. And then I would take over the show, and I would kind of do what I do now. It wasn't a review show. And I just really enjoyed it. And I kept asking the powers that be at CNET to give me a show. And they said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they kept going on. It just never happened. So I started my YouTube channel to prove to CNET that this was a good idea. And then after maybe a month of doing it, I realized I didn't want CNET to take it, because then they would own it. I said, that's OK. I'll just keep doing this on my own. And that's what I did. So it's really thanks to CNET that I knew that I could, quote, perform in front of a television camera. Anybody? Anybody? Let's go over here. Do you have uh, any preferred music that you like to use on, on review? Well, do I have any preferred music for reviews? Well, I don't refer to it in every review, although I do in, in many, is the recordings from Chesky, because I know what they're supposed to sound like. But I don't refer to them all the time, because it would be boring if I kept talking about the same ones. But uh, I would say anybody who makes audiophile recordings, my definition of audiophile is not necessarily everybody else's. My definition of an audiophile recording is one that is made where the, the, the engineer is trying to capture an event as opposed to making up a sound. So that would be Chesky records, that would be reference recordings, which are fantastic. As a matter of fact, they have a new release that just came out a few days ago. Uh, Todd Garfinkel from MA Recording, who's here at the show, you should definitely listen to his recordings. Those are, those are the big three for me. So, because you know, people say that, let's say, Steely Dan is, is audiophile. And if audiophiles like it, by that definition, it's an audiophile recording. But it is still a multi-tracked, compressed, EQ'd process recording. So it, it doesn't fit my definition, but you know, everybody can have their own definition. For whatever it's worth, one of the subjects of Chesky binaural recordings is playing here tomorrow night, Amber Rubarth. Oh, right. A Amber Rubarth is going to be here. And her first recording for Chesky is called uh, Sessions from the 17th Ward. And I got to say, she was such a natural. You know, a lot of singers and all those Chesky sessions, singers are the, really, it's, it's a very tense situation to record live to two track because when you make a mistake, other than doing it again, you're kind of stuck with it. So it's, it's a tough environment to make a record in. And, and Amber was so calm, cool, collected, just nailed it every time, sang perfectly on every take, incredible. And she's a great musician and she's just, you know, to me, what makes a great singer great, again, just how I feel about it, is that you feel from them. You connect with them emotionally. You feel like she's singing directly to you. So I would definitely recommend you checking her out. Seeing her live is even better than the recording. Yeah, correct me, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I see an absence of uh, reviews on CD players. Do you Wait, people play CDs? <laughs> There's an absence of reviews of CD players? Well, there's an absence of a review of the shit CD player, because it's not out yet, because people keep asking about it. Uh, that's one. But there's just not that many made. Um, We're coming I, back. Coming back? It's the next big thing? CD? I think it's got a future. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's you. Why are we so hung up? Why are we hung up on reproducing the sound of musicians playing together in a room? Which I was talking about a while back, right? I just think because we kind of can imagine what it's supposed to sound like. A recording that's more processed and treated and overdone and stuff, it's an abstraction and it can sound beautiful and we can like it, but it's hard to know what it's supposed to be. So I think that answers your question. I don't know if it's satisfying, but that's why. You know what, each of us figures this out in our own way. I think that's what this really comes down to. We're all on our own journeys. We have to put together a system, as some other reviewers said, that only pleases us. 
That's all that matters. It doesn't matter what your friends think. It doesn't matter what I think. As long as you're happy with your system, that's it. That's it. It's game over time. Enjoy your music and have a happy day. Very long time. I'm tired. Has the wife had any plan for you to retire to make her happy? Wait, you want wait, the question is should my, my does my wife want me to retire? Yeah. You mean to get rid of all this stuff that's filling our apartment with all these boxes and cables and wires and audio? You mean Mrs. Audiophiliac wants me to stop all of that? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. No, no. You haven't watched enough of my shows, clearly. No, she's very happy. She has a nice little system of her own. I can't identify what it is because it's, uh, it's not exactly audio, audiophiliac approved. But she's really happy with her system because she, even though she denies that she's an audiophile, she actually is an audiophile. And the reason I know this is because back in the day, um, when we would go to somebody's apartment who had a system, when we would go out the door, she was the one that would critique the system, not me. <laughs> and she would say, I'm not an audiophile. So yeah, but you care about it apparently more than I do. So she's an audiophile. I think we need to wrap. Wrap. OK. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is great. I so appreciate it. Let's meet back here tomorrow. I'm not done. Thank you. Thank you.